Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Connie from Out of Work. Today we're going to discuss my dual battery system. It is the most advanced dual battery system out there. I don't think any DIYer has ever attempted anything like this. So, spent 60 hours on it. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome to the show. It's Connery from Out of Work Outdoors. Today I'm going to show you what I built for the truck. So if you haven't watched kind of part one on how we, how we chose and how to build your setup, go reference part one. Then come back to this build. Because this is pretty much going to build right on top of that, that video. Uh, I'm going to throw a lot of names and terms and things like that out there that might confuse you. So if you haven't seen that one, go watch that one first. I think it's, I don't know, I'll have a link here somewhere. Uh, and anyhow, this is my system. You know, like we said in part one, majority of the people will probably go with something like lead acid, isolator, some type of another lead acid. But this is actually lithium. But what I've done is I've actually chosen the lithium route. So with my system, it is a lead acid, which is still the original Toyota battery. A DC to DC charger and the actual lithium battery. 50 amp hours, and that battery is right here. Conveniently placed in this. I don't know. Toyota's got this cutout right here. Let me show you the inside. Toyota's got this cutout that's perfect for this battery. On both sides of the wheel well. I don't know why they do that now, but regardless, it fits perfectly. But anyways. Uh, we got a battery here, and then we got battery management right here. Okay, that's all battery management. And then we have a battery charger. This is a Red Art 1225DC or D. Oh, <laughs> let me say that again. The BCDC 1225D. That's what it is. That's the exact model. And then we got a thousand watt inverter from Renogy. And then we got a whole bunch of switch panels type stuff up here goes to our lights you know that type of stuff so anyways power main truck power is right here so this is actually tied to the starting battery we've labeled it red main and then this is the blue lithium so that's the bus that comes right off this plug right here so that's the lithium battery and that right here is just ground all ground truck ground everything ground so we got a ground bus there and another ground bus over here, if you guys can see that, which is then tied to the chassis. Chassis, yeah. I know, I might have to find a better solution than that. But so far, it's been working pretty good. I've used it for about a month and a half now. Okay, so how does this whole system work? It's probably what you guys are saying right now. Like, this is confusing as heck. And yeah, it is, it is, it is a bit confusing. It's not, it never was supposed to be easy. I mean, I've already designed four, five revisions. This is the fifth revision right now of this, this, of this. Okay, so basically what we're doing is this is your enable. So this is, there's, a, there's one in the, this is the cab, and there's also another one just like this under the hood. This is your power enable. So you send 12 volts to it, and it basically closes a switch, closes a switch and it's it then sends power out so the power then comes out to two relays right you got relay number one relay number two and you also got red power that comes out relay number one relay number two so there's two power systems coming into these two relays right and then it goes out it goes out to two systems so this basically goes back to the cab this goes this way, which powers the inverter, and it goes up to that system right there. That is basically a whole bunch of breakers and box, uh, breakers and fuses, which is basically a switch pattern to turn things on and off. All right, so based on normally closed, normally open on these two, you will, these will get power either from this battery or the main battery. Well, actually, let me say that again. These units will either get power from the main or power from the lithium. By default, 
normally closed, these are set up to pull power from the lithium. And these, the, the energizing power for this is your, uh, your ignition 12. Okay, so those guys that know what I'm talking about, I got a, another switch up front in the, in the cabin that will, t will basically allow you to switch it between whatever you want. So by default, it's on ignition. By, no, by default, it's on lithium. So you just got to turn the lithium battery on. And these two accessories will be powered by lithium. But if you're like, okay, hold on. The truck's already running. The batteries are low. I need the battery to charge. I want to divert power from lithium, which is the blue, and go to the red. You basically flip two switches, click, click, and then now these two lines are powered off the alternator or the starting battery. That's a pretty cool system. This right here, this is for solar power. So we haven't hooked that up yet. But solar power is basically the same thing. Uh, normally closed, it's on solar power. Norm then you can open it, which basically just goes to open, which will force the BCDC to go and charge off the alternator. It's got a green feature to it, which means it wants it favors solar if there's solar available. Which I, we don't have solar yet, but yeah, so we don't have solar yet. This is just kind of planning for the future. But say like if you're, you're cruising through the mountains, you're in and out of shadowy areas, so you're in and out of trees, you don't want to go solar if you need to charge battery at that point. Solar is just going to mess your day up because it'll be high voltage, low voltage, high voltage, high, high, low, low, low. It's stupid. Go to the alternator, charge your batteries. When you set up base camp, then you can worry about solar. If you're moving really much, if you're pretty much if you're moving, you're not on the highway or some type of a road, you don't want to go to solar my opinion all right and then we got a spare we're not doing anything with spare yet okay and here's the uh charger that we've chosen the power red arc bcdc no, you can't really see it but it is blinking away it is monitoring the lithium right now and that's what we have chosen because the main reason for this versus all the other brands is it is because it is potted all the other brands I noticed were not potted or the prices didn't make any sense. Too many components, too many extra wires. All in one, potted, good design. I like it, thank you, I bought it. Let's see. And you're like, what is this contraption here? So basically, this is the power that comes in here. And then this tap, taps off around and goes up to that. That's where all your fuses, and switches go to. Yeah. So you control six different items up there. Six items. It's pretty cool. You, you go to like the. Uh, you can hook up light bars and whatever with that. And here we have a shocky diode modified to send power one way only. I had this problem where this has a lot of capacitance in it, and due to the fact that I have a bunch of circuitry on here. When I flip the switch, the ca the stored capacity in this would actually, f the, the current, the power funnel back and keep these accessories on. I, did, I just didn't like that. So put a shocky diode right there, 100 amp rating, I think it's 4,000 watts surge or something like that to uh, to keep this bad boy happy and keep all the, all the electronics happy. Basically it's a one way, uh, one way gate for the guys that don't understand. Electronics very well. We got ground wires, more ground wires. We got okay. So, anyways, let's let's talk about the charger. The charger basically. The charger has a lithium profile, a light bulb lithium profile. We've tied the two lines together here, which enables it. And then this is voltage sensing type stuff. Um, so basically, input off the main red goes in. That is the solar input for the charger, which goes to this one. Actually, yeah, which actually goes to this one. As you can see, it makes wrong goes over here. We're not using it. It's just kind of hanging out at the moment. Uh, we got a output, and we got a ground right here. So that's it. It's pretty simple hookup. The charger has done a pretty good job, as far as I know. 
at one time I did run it completely down to the point where it was reading about nine volts. I think it was nine volts. Yeah, it's like nine. So it's a completely dead lithium. No problem jumping it all the way back up. And it charges fairly quick too, 25 amps. On a 50 amp hour lithium, I think it took about two hours to charge, something like that. So uh, the other thing about lithium is it charges real quick too. It charges real quick. So it's a really, really, really big benefit for me. Um, so let me give you guys one final look at what I got here. So it's a thousand watts. Just took the switch right there. And yeah, two plugs. It's got a remote on it too, but I don't see use for the remote. And yeah, it is installed kind of backwards because I needed the power to, to sit this way. Yeah, just don't worry about it. It works just fine. So here's kind of a final look at the uh, power management side of everything. I tried to clean up the wires as best I can. And I still got to probably uh, do something about this and do something about this. Other than that, that's the system. And if you're looking at it, you're like, dang, there's like a whole bunch of signal wires right here. A signal for that, a signal for that, a signal for that, a signal for that, a signal, well, no signal yet because it's tied over here, but where is the panel for that? Hmm. Well, yeah, let's go take a look. Well, actually, let's take a look at under the hood first. Look at the Tacoma. Like I said, so you got the stock battery. Yeah. Let's zoom it out a little bit. Let's zoom it out a little bit. There we go. Stock battery still. Doing fine. No need to change it. Uh, the new smart, the smart alternator is actually doing a real good attending to this uh, battery. It's done very well. Uh, but then we did have to change out the terminals. Uh, the stock terminal wouldn't get gutted. We needed more terminals to bolt onto. So this is a TH Marine system. It's actually for a boat. Put it on there. I like the fact that it's got individuals, kind of like this. I think the audio world and the audio world didn't have what I what I liked. So we went through the uh, the boat world. They had this. That's all in English. It's not metric. So I hope they will have someday come up with a metric system, uh, metric nuts and bolts. But anyways, we also changed this out. Also changed this out. This is still the factory Toyota connector, and everything else is new. So that's still factory Toyota as well, right here. Factory Toyota, factory Toyota. You can, always, you can almost put them together and then run these two separately. Actually, it's not a bad idea. I might have to do that. And then, as you can see, I have two running off of that, running to two different. Um, uh, these are breakers, right? That's rated 300 and that's rated 450. And currently it is open and currently it is closed. So, this is the system that runs to the back where, where I've dubbed it uh, main red. And this actually runs through a relay first, and then it goes through that, and then it goes out. It goes onto this cable, which snakes around that way, and then down the other side, which goes underneath the truck, along the frame, and it goes out there. But we have another cable. This is a blue cable. It comes right back, and it sits right here. This is for emergency start. So this, this project I've done, we've also incorporated the emergency start feature, something that a lot of the overland builds may or may not have. Uh, I know that for a fact that a lot of them want it, but a lot of them don't have it. So we've incorporated that feature as well. Once again, here's the other solenoid. They call it an isolator. I just use it as a switch. It's great. So we got a switch coming in. Uh, this is the enable. Used as an enable. Say this is cab enable. No, this is main power enable. And this is the relay for the emergency start. Normally closed, it just... It's wired up normally closed, so it just goes, comes right back out, goes this way, hits the isolator, goes back out. Uh, but if this is ever switched to the other pole, we are now putting this battery and the lithium battery in parallel, which oh, which should never be done, but under emergency situations, you will have to do it. So what controls all these relays and you know uh, solenoids? Let me show you. This is the back seat. And power comes up through the floor somewhere down there. I think this little crack is actually pretty good. Power comes up through the floor, drill a hole, comes through the floor, goes through this plastic wall, and then basically you get split from there. So this is the fuse box for the panel switch up front. So you have a green panel switch right there, right in the middle that I was playing with before. 
that controls all the relays and fuses in this box. It's actually really, really nice system. It's only $65 off eBay. So if you guys want that, uh, check the annotations. Actually, everything you'll see here, I'll, put, I'll try to put in the, uh, the descript video description so you can go and buy. Um, this is something that I've always wanted. Dedicated 500 watt charger. And we've just snaked the wires out so people can use it. And also a dedicated USB. That's dedicated USB. Supply power, it just supplies power to USB devices. It also supplies power to a Weeboos on the other side of the truck. I'll show you that. Let's check this out. Here's the Weeboos right here. You can see it? It's kind of, it's kind of dark. But say if it wasn't dark, you probably see it. Weeboos. This guy just hidden. Currently being powered off lithium battery. All right, here is where all the magical power management happens. So, we got six switches to controls four relays and th two isolators, okay? But the isolators are just basically a switch. They call it an isolator, but I'm using them as a switch. Okay, so these two control the two isolators and everything else controls the relays, right? So... Let me just run you down what they do. All right, I'm trying to get fit in here. Okay, so we got, I, oh, by the way, I do like this type of switch because it's got a protective cover on it, and when you snap them down, they disable things. Uh, a lot of these switches that are just basic rockers, um, I find it kind of iffy because, say, some if somebody else drives a truck, I don't want them just to miss push things, so everything's protected here. If everything's shut off, the truck drives perfectly like a stock. You gotta, you gotta kind of know what you're doing to, to be pushing buttons. So, as a protective layer, uh, this is what I bought. And uh, if you guys want any of this stuff, it'll be in the links in the uh, video description. And you can go out and buy them. But anyways, this is solenoid number one, which is main power enable. And this is solenoid number two, which is lithium power enable. This is cab lithium power override trunk lithium power override solo override and put the do put the two batteries together it's an emergency situation we need to jump start ourselves that's the last one it's kind of hidden and tucked away for a reason you don't want to ever activate that one unless if it's an emergency right so this one this one this one and this one are all um, powered by ignition 12. Uh, what I mean by that is if the key is not in the ignition, no matter what you do to this, there's no there's no action, right? So you need power to come to the switches for anything to happen. But this one, an emergency, is powered by lithium. And like I said, this is cab, cab override and trunk override. By default, if you're not gonna override them, they will default to the lithium. Okay, so as soon as you turn the lithium on, remember these are relays, uh, the, uh, relay one and two, they're normally closed. Normally closed is lithium. And when that happens, all of your electronics powers up. So I got this whole grid system thing going. So I got USB and then got Windows. I still need to put labels on or somehow make custom labels on. But see that? That's lithium power. There's no key ignition. Lithium power is up and running. Everything else, like I said, with the exception of that one, which we're not gonna turn on, uh, is is gonna light up at any time as long as the lithium power is there and it, it is available. It will come on. So, you can put this on. You can try to divert, basically, nothing to, well, actually, not divert, override, right? So, this is cab override. That's cab right there. That's the cab panels. Uh, if you're trying to override to truck power, there is no truck power, so it's not going to override. The relay in the back will not switch over. It will not switch over. There's no power to override. Because once again, you don't actually have power to override anything to. Alright, so keep an eye on that. Let me put the keys in. 
We'll demo. We'll demo. Ignition 12. So, keys in. Ignition 12 is on. Ignition 12 is hot. Ignition 12 is on, which will allow us to turn on the other half of the grid, basically. The other half will be this one. This is main power. Main power is on. So main power is on, lithium power is on. Currently, it's still on lithium power. So let's just shut that off. So it's off, right? Divert power. Override. It's overrided. Power is now coming from the truck and not the lithium. So we can also do that with the power in the bed. Override. So that is basically, you could run your inverter on override to the truck. So your alternator starter battery could run the alternator, well, run the inverter. It can run all the lights. It can run everything. If you have a backup fridge, it can run the fridge too. So that's why that's there. You can also turn them all back off. And that shuts off. Then guys will be like, wait, hold up. Wouldn't that stay on and just drain my starter battery? No, not necessarily. If you have all this stuff on, if you have it all on, right? So lithium's on, main power's on, and they're both overrided to main power. As soon as you pull the keys out of the car, let's try to do this without bumping it too much. See that? They all shut off. They go back to their defaults. Their default is lithium power. Back on, truck, basically it's on truck mode, and there you go. Shuts it all back off, everything diverts back to lithium power. As you can see, my green switch panel over here never turned off. It basically just switched power sources. And that's something that I kind of pride myself on because I thought of all that. <laughs> Anyways, that's the truck. If you guys want to look at any of these pieces about how I built it, where I got the parts from, uh, where I got the parts from and everything, uh, it's going to be video description. Check it out. I'll list everything. It's pretty pricey to build. It's probably the craziest DIY you could do. But man, when it's done, it's, it's freaking awesome, man. It's pretty unique, too. Probably the only one in the uh, United States that has it. Just saying, you know. Just saying.